Hey everyone, it's 7007. How you guys doing? Let me just flip the camera around here for a second. So, uh, just going to do a quick live stream here. Um, this is going to be uh, me checking out this uh, pits, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, and also some of the other things I've been up to uh, in the last couple of weeks here. So, um, this is my dental lab back here. I've been doing some work this morning. And let me just flip the camera around. And if you guys don't mind, just making sure that I have audio. I should. Looks like I should have audio going on. All right, let me flip the camera around here. We'll get started. And I'm going to check one more time just to make sure that the audio is good. OK, everyone, uh, so welcome back to my RC lair, my uh, laboratory, or uh, the RC pilot's lounge, if you will. So uh, I'm going to do a quick unboxing of, of this Pitts airplane here from Dynam. Uh, should be pretty cool. Uh, I just wanted to go over a few things that I've been doing over the last uh, couple weeks here. Um, number one, um, I've been doing a ton of 3D printing. So I just got an Ender 3 about two months ago, and I've been printing pretty much nonstop. Pretty uh, useful things and also uh, some non not so useful things as well. So um, I'm just going to show you a couple of those uh, things here real quick. Um, I've had lots of excellent uh, prints with the Ender 3. I literally have not had too many failures, just a couple here and there, and usually that was something to do with settings. So, um, hey, Mr. Uh, Sky and R D F P V. <laughs> okay, so here's my Ender 3, guys. I'm actually printing out a uh, K-cup holder right now. This is the base of it. Getting some of the first layer down. That's some, some black, um, some, uh, what is this, uh, Hatchbox uh, PLA. Uh, the Meteor, thanks for, for reminding me that here's the Meteor. It is ready for its new motors, which I have right here. These are 1850 kV uh, in brushless in runners. Um, the thing flies really, really good. I'm hoping to have some onboard footage of the Meteor pr coming up pretty soon. That should be pretty awesome. Uh, and talking about the 3D prints, so here's a couple of useless prints that I've done. Of course, the Millennium Falcon. This one was actually printed in two pieces. There's a split line right here, so they actually print up on their end like this. So that was pretty cool. I've got my wrench holder here, my uh, my Terminator wrench holder. That turned out pretty awesome. Um, this is a phone holder. Um, I'm just getting into sim racing right now. I've, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I love race car driving. Um, and the sim is making it much more affordable to actually just buy a sim and drive lots of different cars and lots of different tracks. I'm in love with the Nürburgring right now in Germany. Uh, it's the you know 12 mile loop that is really hard to memorize and all that stuff. So, and here is Hogwarts. I printed this out for my kids. I stole it from their bedroom so I could uh, show this to you guys today. Here's Hogwarts, and my son put a little bit of the rub gold rub and buff on here just to give it a little bit of effect here. I would like to actually print one of these at some point and fully paint it, which that would be pretty cool. It'd be a fun little project. Printed this out for Halloween. It's just uh, one of these wire skulls. Hold your pens. And sorry, guys, I'm an, I'm an Apple guy. So uh, here's a really cool Apple. It's called, it's called the Apple Box. If you look this up on Thingiverse, it's pretty sweet. Very, very strong. This is actually the clear PLA. It's called glass PLA. So yeah, I've been busy. <laughs> I've been busy with that printer. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me just move this stuff off to the side real quick. Thanks to everyone for joining me. I haven't done a live stream in a long, long time. So I'm just gonna move this stuff off the desk so we have some room to look at the airplanes. Which is of course why you guys are all here. Let's, let's check out some airplanes. Okay guys, uh, um, I had a, um, oh I have a profile airplane, a 3D printed airplane. Excuse me, not 3D printed, a foam board airplane that um, a good buddy of mine, Steve, out at the local field cut out for me and I, I haven't done any videos on that but it is basically a foam board replication of a Halon which is a 3D like 540 type of airplane um, and that one's made out of Depron which is a uh, Depron with like some some skinning on it and it actually makes it quite stiff so I've been flying that around for a while and it's been doing really good and everyone's telling me about the uh, the what is it the Twisted Hobbies airplane so I really wanted to get one of these, but the one thing I didn't want to do was to have to build it. And I've always been looking for used ones uh, online, but of course, once they're put together, you really can't break them down to ship them. So finally, one came up in Huntington Beach. Um, and I understand to put these together, really, it costs you around 200 bucks or so. So 
This one, uh, I bought it for 150 bucks. Um, all put together, full servos. Um, I, it also has the Twisted Hobbies branded Lemon RXs in here, so I already bound this thing up and uh, it's um, running uh, individual uh, ailerons on both sides so you can tune things up quite a bit. But um, this is a 39 inch wingspan uh, crack yak. Uh, it's called a crack yak 55. I don't know why they call it a 55. And here it says 24 gray series. I don't know what that means either. But um, I actually throttled this up this morning, um, did a quick hover in my hand, and it, lo it looks like it's really quite powerful. It's got like a 10, 10 4, 5 prop. Yeah, 10, 4, 5 slow fly, fly prop. So this thing is really super lightweight. It takes like an 850 milliamp battery pack up to about a 1300 3S. Um, the guy has this spec'd out really nice. I mean, if you, if you look at the, um, the wiring here that they have, it's, it's really well done. And I just realized I left my bind plug in, so I'm going to have to bind it one more time. But a uh, little 30 amp ESC up there in the front, and this is a G-Force 1200 kV motor is a, a 2830. So, uh, like I said, I, I, I really appreciate people who build these things because I don't have the patience or the time for it right now. I'm uh, working a lot after the pandemic. Uh, panda when pan the pandemic started, I was uh, pretty much unemployed for two months straight, which was really, really strange for me. You know, I've been working the previous 20 years, 25 years with, uh, without stop. So, so for, to have somebody build something this well and they did a really good job putting it together, I was super, super happy. So let me put this aside and let's get to the main event. I'll just take a quick peek. Hey, it's Robert Orlip. How's it going, buddy? Stuart, uh, sorry for, <laughs> Stuart, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? Uh, I've been watching all your videos coming across on Facebook. I always wonder if I should put this on Facebook or if I should put this uh, this on YouTube. But I figure YouTube will get a slightly bigger audience, maybe not as a live stream, but possibly as just a, a standalone video. So, all right. So guys, uh, obviously I've been getting a lot of things in from Dynam. Dynam has been working with my channel to help promote their products. So keep in mind that this is purchased. Uh, it wasn't purchased by me, it was given to me by Dynam. Now, anytime I like to do reviews, and this is not a review, this is just a quick unboxing so you guys can see what's inside, but anytime I do reviews, guys, I always like to, you know, have three, four things that I really like about the, the airplanes, and maybe two to three things that maybe could improve that I can criticize on, because it's hard when you get airplanes from a company to criticize them because they are the ones giving you the, uh, the um, airplanes. I try to keep my reviews as unbiased as possible. I just did the Gloucester Meteor. You know, there's definitely some problems with the, the wingtip ends, but if you guys are a hobbyist like we are, um, like those type of problems, as long as you're willing to deal with those things, not a big deal. Some people, they want to get uh, an airplane straight out of the box and fly it. That would be your E-Flight airplanes, which are just ready to go. I, I do notice that the Dynam airplanes, um, they're a bit of a hobbyist. Um, airplane to get it to the specifications that you like it to. So I don't know if this will be the same, um, but my buddy Eric, uh, who's a good flyer, uh, he, I fly with him pretty awesome. I fly with him pretty uh, regularly, said that he's had three of these airplanes and if Eric's has had three, that means he must really like them a lot. He, does, he did say that they, they fly quite well. So let me just pop the top here and I will move you guys on the um, tripod over here so you can actually get an overhead view of what's happening in here. I'll probably have to adjust the uh, the uh, the thing that the camera is on. <laughs> Let me pull this over real quick for you guys. The tripod. It's amazing when you're trying to think in a live video, you know, just things don't come out as smoothly as you would like sometimes. <laughs> All right, let's uh, just move this down. All right, and I'm gonna need to back this up quite a bit. So just so you guys are not so close that you can't see anything. I'll move it back just a bit more. And I guess I'll go behind the table here. I think you're right, um, Stuart, is that the dynam planes are definitely high value. Um, there's a, a lot of value involved in, in getting a, a plane for a lot less expensive. I think back to my, my Cessna 188, the, um, the crop duster airplane, and it's really an amazing airplane. And the thing I like about it the most is that it has 
wonderful scale detail. I mean, like nothing was spared in the scale detail. So I'm right down here, guys. So I'm just gonna pull this apart and show you guys what's in the box here. Like I said, it'll just be a quick unboxing. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know even if in the future if I'm gonna do unboxing videos, but I figure this is a really nice time to kind of catch you guys up with my, my channel. You know, obviously with the pandemic and me working so much, my uh, reviews and whatnot have definitely slowed down. Uh, I am getting pretty excited though, guys. I'm at, I think, 9,500 subscribers, somewhere around there. I'm coming up on my big 10,000 subscribers. So when I hit 10,000 subscribers, YouTube doesn't do anything for you. What they do for it, what, what I want to do is actually print out a, a YouTube play button and PLA, which should be quite appropriate for 10,000 RP. <laughs> 10,000 subscribers, which would be pretty funny. Uh, it should be in plastic and PLA, right? <laughs> okay, guys, first box, and so far everything is, is um, packaged very nicely, as uh, a lot of times it is uh, with a with a Dynam. Uh, so here's the nicely painted tail here. Just gonna go to together just about like that. Uh, nice hinges. Now, this one does have a warp to it, so I'm going to have to correct that. Uh-oh. <laughs> I could always put some uh, some um, some carbon spars in here, possibly. This is a very, very, very thin uh, rudder. Like I said, you know, they gave this to me, but I have to be critical where criti uh, criticism is due. Uh, the elevator's curved up a little bit, too, as well. Maybe on this biplane, you know, he's, he's got such huge wings, it, it won't make a huge difference, but I, it looks like I do want to correct that. Um, I'm going to exercise this elevator here a little bit. This one thing you guys should always do when you get these airplanes is that make sure before you uh, attach your servos that you go through and you make sure that all of your um, control surfaces are, are bending freely. And if they need to be reinforced, make sure you reinforce those as well. As you guys can see, that is bent up just a little bit. So I could always heat this and put it under some books and make, try and make it flatter, but we shall see. Yeah, just see if I can just bend it the other direction here. I never like to criticize a model unless I have some sort of solution for it as well. Like, you know, if you're gonna say, hey, this is, this is crap, you know, have some way of saying, hey, well, here's how you would make it better. That's uh, what I call constructive criticism. <laughs> All right, and I will look at your guys' comments as soon as, I, as soon as I'm done pulling this thing out of the box. Uh, looks like we have some nice stout landing gear. That looks pretty good. Got the nice wheel pants on there. Propeller. Um, one thing I love about uh, Dynam airplanes, every single one that I've gotten has had two propellers in the box. This one appears to have one, but I could be wrong. Uh, we got the spinner in here and all your extra bolts and, and whatnot. Got your canopy and the uh, pilot. I tend to fly my airplanes without pilots. Um, it tends, I don't know, I don't know why. It's just something I've always done. And here's another, oh, these are the cabanes for the top to bottom of the wing. It looks like another set of landing gear. That's kind of interesting, unless this is part of the cabane system. The cabanes are the parts that attach the top and bottom wings together. I learned that um, back when I was doing my um, e-flight pits. All right, so we have a little, protector there. Here's the fuselage. Um, and I do, I do love that Dynam really does a great job in painting their airplanes. Um, I, I do, as you guys know, like to put minwax on everything. I'm probably going to put minwax on this one as well. It just helps to protect your hand oils from dirtying up this nice paint here. Looks pretty stout. It's got the silver there. Uh, wings are going to attach right here. Probably your, your uh, landing gear are going to go right underneath this little guy here. Um, I do also like the fact that uh, Dynam always specs their airplanes with XT60s, which I love. Um, the one uh, criticism I always have with Dynam airplanes is I don't like their wing attachment points, which are these uh, small little receptacles here, and they tend to bend over a little bit, or um, sometimes there's not enough foam on the other side of them to help keep them from pull pulling out of the... Uh, out of the foam. Uh, and it looks like this is a similar here. I've never had one fail, but I have had problems getting the screws to line up because there's four small screws that usually hold these together. But uh, so far, this is looking pretty awesome here. It's got the, uh, the instruments on the, on the panel here. Uh, I think, is this a dual passenger? It looks like maybe there's uh, room for two guys that are in there. Let's see here. 
It could be. Yeah. All right, so let's pull this out here. We'll get those wings out. It's like what you got our Pitts Python decals. Those will look really nice on the outside. And these are actual stickers, decals, not the uh, water transfer stickers that were on the Gloucester Meteor that I was quite shocked about. <laughs> Of course, um, this is the standard instruction manual from Dynam. It has usually a single sheet for your uh, ESC instructions. It's usually one sheet for all their models because it covers from like a 20 amp all the way up to like an 80 amp ESC. And we have our one page um, build instructions. Usually the builds on these are quite straightforward. Usually I don't even have to really look at the, the instructions, but except for to see what size screws is happening in there. So. We'll go past that. Let's check out the wings real quick. I'll just get rid of this big box here. All right, let's do this. Um, as far as uh, motor goes, I believe this is a 650 kV motor. It's running on 4S, uh, which Sounds pretty good. It looks like it sounds like it'll have a lot of uh, oomph underneath um, this this biplane here. It, it was funny. I just got to fly my buddy's. Um, he has a, a Mamba, which is a really sporty biplane. I just flew it last weekend. Uh, he let me uh, fly the thing. Really great airplane. So I'm really excited to uh, see how this, um, this biplane is going to fly. Let's see here. So we will have upper and lower wing connections that will help uh, the upper and lower um, control surfaces move at the same time. So that's, that's pretty cool. And um, like with a lot of uh, biplanes, there's going to be a straight wing on the bottom and on the top. You can see that the wing is slightly angled back, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me just grab the knife here, we'll just take these out of the bag real quick. You can see the attachment points, points for the cabanes uh, on the top of the wing here. This guy right here, it looks like a little piece of carbon right there. And here is the connection pieces for the top wing, it's going to be basically like that. Uh, yeah, unfortunately this airplane is not one of the ones that I can kind of uh, fit everything together. Uh, maybe just the lower wing, let's see here. But the foam uh, with Dynam models always seems to be pretty high quality, uh, which I like. I don't like that, that beer cooler foam that sometimes you get. Okay, so there's a little preview. See here, so let me just walk around here, guys. Well, we'll wrap this out up pretty soon, guys. So there's the half the wing installed. Um, so yeah, I'm, I've been really happy with all the Dynam things I've, I've had. I've got the DC-3 over here. Uh, I, I really like my crop duster. I, it's just, they've been very good airplanes so far. So I, I'm hoping that this one is just the same. It's like we've got our battery compartment right up here. It's gonna go right up inside the nose and a little spot for your uh, receiver right here. So this is nice to have this little uh, spot where you can put your battery in. So yeah, definitely the paint uh, is really, really nice. I like the paint scheme. So uh, we'll get this all together pretty soon and we'll be uh, checking out in, uh, in a future video. So let me just walk you guys back here and we shall wrap up. New airplane day is always, always, always a fun thing for, for me. I like to share with you guys. So let's just uh, take a quick peek here. Let me flip the camera around. Yeah, any biplane looks good in my opinion, says Robert, yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, there, Petrinchik, uh, yeah, Robert's here. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, let's see here. Well, 
Robert says, when you think of what you can pay for a Dynam, you can afford to fix them to your liking. That is very true. And Stuart says, I was tempted by this, and as I have a Waco and pilot, Robert spoke of it so highly, and I loved it, so I was intrigued to see how this pits us as far. Beautiful lines. It says, the, oh, the Waco is amazing. Uh, this is uh, uh, Robert Patrick. Patri Patri Patricia, Patricia, I can never pronounce your last name. <laughs> uh, from Slovenia. Uh, Albert, he said that Alba, Waco is amazing, that Albatross is not. I just can't fly that bird, but I will get a new test steerman in the future. I really like their steerman. The steerman looks really amazing. Let's see. Uh, his, I, and Robert says, I also have a Waco as well. <laughs> the wings, show us the wings. Um, yeah, the new steerman does look amazing, uh, says, uh, and everyone says, uh, I'll need to check that one out and check out the cooling on my ESC Waco. All right, guys. Big salute to you, uh, Robert and uh, Cop Captain Blage. <laughs> and J John H uh, HVRC, I think, is here. All right, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone, for, for joining me. Like I said, anytime I get a new airplane, it's like we all get a new airplane, right? Got a little Corsair up there. Got uh, Microjet, Zod, H HD wing. There's the P-51D, and this is uh, a slope glider. <laughs> but let me see here. We got the um, nice uh, DC-3 over here, C-47. Let's see what we got. Oh, man, this is a mess over here on this side. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, the... Um, the measures, uh, the uh, this this airplane right down there. I I uh, unfortunately I I got yeah I got uh, unfortunately I got um, was it when you lose orientation I lost orientation with my um, FW one ninety and I crashed it and I messed up the landing gear so I'm waiting to uh, fix the landing gear on that and fly that thing again because I, I had a maiden video but it wasn't that great so I wanted to actually. Do some nice flight video with that. One thing I'm noticing, and, and I think this airplane and also this Waco has the same motor. It's like a 650 kV motor. I wish for the 4S airplanes that they would, yes, it is a fun jet. <laughs> I wish for these airplanes that they would up the kV of the motor just a little bit because I felt like the FW190 was a little bit slow for what it was. Now, I guess I could change the prop to more aggressive prop, but um, I wish they would spec them to they would be a little bit more sporty for my liking. You know, it might be fine, you know, in general, but I like to have a quite the sporty airplane. But, uh, all right, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining me. I haven't done a live stream in a long time. And, you know, like I said, I've been crazy busy after the, after the pandemic hit. So I was off work for about two months. Then, boom, you know, we were back to business and we were crack, cracking. So my regular job, I normally just work part-time. But now I'm full-time with that. And my lab business, even though it was down for two months, uh, I was doing it part-time. Now I'm pretty much doing it full-time because everyone's back and, you know, kids need their retainers and whatnot and their dental appliances. So uh, I've been super, super busy. But I'm still getting out on, on Sundays uh, with the Sunday Funday Flyer Group, which has been awesome. Those guys have been really fun, fun group of guys that I just I, I like to fly with. You, you can't really, um, you can't really uh, fault me for wanting to fly there. It's this big open green field. Uh, the groundskeeper there cuts the grass the morning before we come and gets it all watered and it's just a lovely spot to land on. If you've got landing gear, it's just the softest thing that you can you can land on. So anyway, uh, once again, thank you to Dynam for sending me these pits. Um, uh, I, the owners there and I have been in, uh, in talks and it's been really uh, fun to get to uh, show you guys these airplanes as they come out of the box and get them out to the field and, and fly them. I need to redo a video also on the C-47 because uh, it's such a great flyer. Since my main video where I crashed it, um, it really flies great on 4S, no, no modifications necessary. And uh, I really want to do another video on that because I enjoy flying it so much. It flies great and it lands great. And anyway, anyway, I'll stop gushing in about it. All right, guys, everyone, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Robert. Th thanks, um, Stuart. We'll see you guys later. Bye.